Geologic Maps Part 2 The Construction of a Section Through a Geologic Map Showing a Fault Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah The subject of this series deals with geologic maps In part 1 an overview of geologic maps and structural features will be presented in part 2, construction of geologic cross sections will be given. Four structural features have been considered simple dipping beds, a nonconformity, a fold, and a fault. Construction of a geologic cross section through a map showing a fault. The adjacent figure shows a hypothetical geologic map with two sets of beds, A to E on the northern part of the map and A to F on the southern part. The two sets are separated by the line FF' prime that represents the trace of a fault plane on the Earth's surface. The map scale is 1 to 1000 and the contour interval is 10 meters. It is required to A. Find the strike and true dip of the beds on both sides of the fault plane and of the fault plane itself and B draw a cross section along the line X Y to draw the strike lines trace each of the contact surfaces between the beds which appear as lines AB BC CD DE and EF and mark the points of intersection between each of the contacts and the contour lines the small black circles in the northern set of sedimentary units and the red circles in the southern set. Also mark the intersection points between the fault line and the topographic contour lines, the yellow solid circles. By joining points of the same elevation for the same boundary by straight lines for all the beds, three sets of strike lines may be identified. The strike lines of the northern set of beds the red lines and those of the southern set, the blue lines, have the same direction and virtually the same spacing. The third set of strike lines are those of the fault plane, the yellow lines. For clarification, we are going to treat each of the three sets separately, then we go back to this figure. Write the symbols and three strike line values for each boundary of the northern set of beds. Extend one of the strike lines to intersect the arrow of north direction and measure the angle. In this case, the strike is north 81 degrees west. Find the direction of decreasing values of successive strike lines of one boundary. This will determine the direction of dip. A rect and arrow perpendicular to one of the strike lines in the direction of dip. The average spacing between two successive strike lines in the northern set is 1.77 cm. The strike interval is 10 meters and the scale is 1 cm equals 10 meters. The value of true dip theta 1 in the northern set of layers may be determined from the equation tangent theta 1 equals strike interval over spacing times scale. By substitution, this gives 10 over 1.77 times 1 over 10, which gives 0.565. Thus, theta 1 equals 29.47 degrees. Therefore, the true dip is 29.5 degrees southwest. Write the symbols and three strike line values for each boundary on the southern set of bits. Extend one of the strike lines to intersect an arrow of north direction and measure the angle. The strike is north 81 degrees west as that of the northern set of pits. To determine the direction of dip, find the direction of decreasing strike line values of one of the boundaries. Erect an arrow perpendicular to one of the strike lines in the direction of dip. The average spacing between two successive strike lines in the southern set of beds is 1.77 cm, similar to the northern set. The strike interval is 10 meters and the scale is 1 cm equals 10 meters. The value of true dip theta 2 of the southern set of layers may be determined from the equation tangent theta 2 equals strike interval over spacing 
times scale. By substitution, this gives 10 over 1.77 times 1 over 10, which result in 0.565. Thus, theta 2 equals 29.47 degrees, therefore the true depth theta 2 is 29.5 degrees southwest. Note that since the strike, strike interval, spacing between the strike lines and the scale are the same in both northern and southern sets of beds, then the dip of both sets is similar. Write the strike line values of the fault plane. Extend one of the strike lines of the fault plane to intersect a line of north direction and measure the angle. In this case, the strike of the fault plane is north 76 degrees east. Find the direction of decreasing values of successive strike lines of the fault plane. This will determine the direction of dip. Erect an arrow perpendicular to one of the strike lines in the direction of dip. The average spacing between two successive strike lines of the fault plane is 0.9 cm. The strike interval is 10 meters and the scale is 1 cm equals 10 meters. The value of true dip, say beta, of the fault plane may be determined from the equation tangent beta equals strike interval over spacing times scale. By substitution, this gives 10 over 0.9 times 1 over 10, which result in 1.11. Thus, beta equals 47.98 degrees. Therefore, the true dip of the fault plane is 48 degrees southeast. After the above clarification and determination of the strike and dip of each of the three sets, we go back to the starting figure and insert the strike line values and boundary symbols. By inserting the arrows of dip and section 9, the map will appear as shown in the figure. Superimpose an edge of a strip of paper on the section line XY and mark the locations of the points X and Y. Mark the intersection points between the line of section and each of the strike lines and write three strike line values for each boundary. Superimpose the edge of another strip of paper on the section line and mark the locations of the points X and Y and the intersection points between the section line and the topographic contour lines together and their elevation values. Superimpose a third edge of strip of paper on the section line and mark the locations of the points X and Y and the intersection points between the boundaries and the section line. On an ordinary graph paper, draw a line segment whose length equals that of the section line XY. Then, erect two vertical lines from the two ends X and Y. The horizontal scale along XY equals that of the map, that is, 1 cm equals 10 meters. Let the vertical scale equals the horizontal scale, that is, 1 to 1000. Put centimeter marks on the vertical lines. 1 cm equals 10 meters. Put the strike line intersections strip of paper on the graph paper. For each boundary, erect vertical lines from its strike line marks with their heights corresponding to their elevations. Mark their ends, then join them by a straight line which will represent the boundary whose values were projected. Thus, Starting from the line of the fault plane F, project upward each of the four intersection points F80, F70, F60, and F50 according to their elevations. Connect the ends of the foregoing verticals with a straight line. This will represent the line of the fault plane F. Now, starting from the boundary AB, project upward each of the three intersection points AB90, AB80, and AB70 according to their elevations, then connect their ends with a straight line. That will represent the boundary AB. Repeat the preceding step to the other boundaries BC, CD, and DE 
as shown in the following sequence of figures. Repeat the foregoing step to the other set of sedimentary rock units, starting again from the boundary AB, then BC, CD, DE, and EF, as shown in the following sequence of figures. Put the edge of the second strip of paper on the section line and erect upward vertical lines with their heights corresponding to their elevation values and mark their ends. Superimpose the boundary intersection point strip of paper on the section line and from each boundary point erect upward a vertical line to cut the corresponding boundary. Connect the surface elevation points to draw the profile line. Make any necessary modification to ensure that the profile line passes through each of the boundary intersection points and extend it from both sides to reach both ends of the section. Erase all the contact lines that lie above the earth surface and any unnecessary vertical lines and points. Put the symbols, coloring and name of each bit as in the following set of figures and the section is done. This is the end of this series. With my compliments, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.